are going to be doing some fuel pressure testing. Fuel pressure tester, this one happens to be an Actron CP7838 Professional Fuel Pressure Tester Kit. And it comes with this, uh, this hose and this bleed off hose and, and this nice booklet and this stuff and all these T-valves and for the Mazda 626 MX-6 probe the only one you're going to need is this. It comes with a Schrader valve and that Schrader valve goes onto the end of this connects up. So it's a really easy connection so you can just install this once and leave it in the car. So if you ever want to do a fuel pressure test again all you have to do is hook it up and prime your pump and get your test. It's pretty neat. It also comes with uh, some worm clamps, hose clamps Worm type. We're going to go over some safety procedures because Mazda has an entire page based on safety procedures. So we're going to read that together. Uh, fuel vapor is hazardous. You don't say. It can very easily ignite, causing serious injury and damage. Always keep sparks and flames away from fuel. Fuel in the fuel system remains under high pressure when the engine is not running. That means if you disconnect your fuel lines, fuel has the potential of spraying all over the place. And more than a couple people have figured that one out in the past in the forums. So in order to combat that, you would start the car, run the car, remove the fuel pump relay, which I've done in previous videos. That will kill the car and relieve the pressure. You will also unscrew the gas cap. Fuel line spills and leaks are dangerous. Fuel can ignite and cause serious injuries or death. That's gasoline uh, or petrol for all you guys in the UK. Fuel can also irritate skin and eyes. To prevent this, always complete the following fuel line safety procedures. Start the engine, remove the fuel pump relay after the engine stalls, and it will stall if you remove the fuel pump relay absolutely 100% every time. Um, you turn the ignition switch off and then you can work with your fuel lines, unpressurized fuel lines. Install the fuel pump relay, I wouldn't do that. I would leave the fuel pump relay out as we've seen in some of my previous videos where that can cause an issue. Always leave the fuel pump relay out until you are ready to prime the car. Uh, to avoid leakage, use rags, install your fuel pressure tester correctly. Make sure everything's securely tightened and fastened between your gauge and your hose. And now on to the first operation, which is a fuel pressure hold inspection. So we're going to prime the system and make sure that it holds fuel pressure for five minutes. I guess you could call it kind of a leak down pressure test for the fuel pressure system. And this is going to let you know if it's your fuel injectors leaking or something else like a fuel pressure regulator not holding pressure. Um, and then once you get to that step, let's say it fails that test, then you can diverge off into the area of testing the injectors or testing the fuel pressure regulator. And we'll get into that in a future video. I'm sure of that one. So now we're going to go install the Schrader valve. Now before you get to your fuel lines, you're going to want to take out your intake system. It is possible to get to the stuff, but it's just really hard. So it's just easiest if you go ahead and you remove your intake components. And I just shot a video on how to remove the intake less than a week ago. Now you get a real good look at your fuel lines. There's two. There's a supply and a return. Now the next thing that we want to do is remove the fuse box lid and we're going to start the car, run the car, and then pull our fuel pump relay. As I've mentioned in previous videos on the fifth gen your fuel pump relay will be about right here it'll be one two three over on the second row here on the 93 to 97s I believe at least 93 to 95 I'm not sure about 96 97 but it might be fuel pump relay is green it's right here your fuel pump relay. Car will stall, set that aside, turn the ignition off. Okay, and now your fuel pressure line should be depressurized. It definitely smells like fuel over here, so just be careful, don't smoke. Uh, and the Schrader valve that they give you has two different size hoses. One size, the smaller hose would get clamped around this smaller side. Or if you need the bigger hose, it can get clamped around this bigger size. Um, I don't know what you would call that, flange of some kind. So you'll need to figure out what size you need. And for me, it looks like the larger size is what I'm gonna need on both sides. Since these two outer ends are 
too small for the, the hose that I'm using. I'm using this diameter hose, not this diameter. And it's too long. What I'm going to do is hacksaw these two ends off, make that much shorter, cut the hose so that it's shorter as well. And that's going to give me plenty of room. I could not put this on the car because this was jammed up against the side of the air filter box. And because the air filter box is bolted down really well, it's not moving for anything. And I could not get this on. Talk about frustrating. So I'm going to have to redo the whole thing, do it better, do it right. That way I don't ever have to mess with this and I can test my fuel pressure with the air box installed. Someone's getting chop sawed. This is going to take a while. This is brass. This is going to take a very long while. Alright, I've been at this for about five minutes now and I'm just getting to the middle core of it. So about seven to eight minutes per side. And that's just going up and down. And that's working, so it's just a matter of time. Okay, well, that side came right off. Um, now it has the smaller diameter pipe all the way through, so it does not get enlarged, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to take an awl or some kind of punch and ream it out and then sand it off so that uh, there's no jagged edges. And now the other side. Come on, everybody. Now I have both ends cut off, and that looks a lot better. So I punched it out with this all, or this, uh, this is the handle end of a uh, file, but that fits in there really well. So I'm just using that because I can't find my all, and just doing something like that. <laughs> Got it back to the regular diameter. Now I have to sh shave off these sharp edges. We're getting there, little by little. Okay, this is the rough edge, unfinished. And this is really sharp down here because it's brass and that's the finished end after sanding looks really good so I'm gonna go with that yeah it's off center a little that'll work well I figured that the reason that this is off center is because this was a solid piece of brass that they drilled and they drilled this off center nothing I can do about that these things are awesome these are tin snips these are Wiss USA drop fours oh man these things are awesome and uh, Andy has had the privilege of seeing what these things can do in a junkyard. These things are amazing. Alright, so we cut about that much off and we're going to go install it. Now, on the 2 liter automatic and 1.8 FP probably as well, um, FS, and that goes for the Probe MX6 Protege Telstar, you might have this trapezoidal connector, which I've shown in other videos. So in order to turn on your fuel pump without actually running your car, what you can do is you can jumper this pin and then go directly to a body ground or something like that. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to use my jumper wire with my uh, alligator clips to do that. And don't worry about getting the wrong one on either side because if you look in here, you'll see this is the only side with the pin. This side over here is your live data port, and they gimped it on the 626 MX6 Ford Probe. Um, there is no live data feed, which means that you can't tune. Now, the Mustang, for example, has a live data port, which is why you can see a lot of Mustang owners tuning their cars, because they have that live data. We don't. So this pin on this side is not even there, completely useless. All right, so what I have is the fuel pump on a T-pin, and then I have the other lead just on the battery negative. Put your key in and turn it to on for 10 seconds. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000. And it's not testing anything. Like everything I learned the hard way, your fuel pressure tester does not go on the top fuel line. That is actually your return line. The bottom line is your feed line. That's the high pressure line. If you hook your fuel pressure tester up to the top line, you're not going to get any pressure, zero pressure, as you saw. So the routing of the fuel is it goes up through the bottom line, along this line, and then down into your injector rail, out through your pressure regulator. So this is at the end, it caps, kind of, and it's hard to explain, but it caps. And then depending on your vacuum pressure, how much you press the throttle is going to increase your vacuum pressure, and then it's also going to increase the fuel pressure that goes back. So we have it properly teed in now, and we're going to give it a shot. Now what we are doing here is a full system pressure test. So we're going to test the entire fuel pressure system all the way back to the tank. 
all fuel lines, all pressure. Uh, the fuel pump pin and attach it to ground and then turn the key on and that works. Now the test is to uh, turn the key to on for 10 seconds, let the pressure rise and come out here and pull your jumper pins. Alright, I've pulled it and pressure is done, gone, no pressure. So that means um, the next test would be to test the return line by doing the same exact test but you pinch off the return line with pliers after you prime it. So you prime it, pinch it off. If your system doesn't hold pressure then the most likely culprit is going to be your fuel pressure regulator or your injectors are leaking but you saw the bleed off how fast that bled off so my guess is it's going to be a fuel pressure regulator you're not going to see fuel injectors leak that much not that fast it's going to be a fuel pressure regulator in my case so I'm going to, I'm going to go after that guy next I'm running out of light so I'll get to that one tomorrow but this video is done and uh, I've obviously failed this test so um, that means you get to see more tests kinda cool we're out